Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Now you will know that I have got a guitar with loads of bits sort of half finished. I've got a bridge in production, uh, a tail stop which is pretty much finished but I've got binding to do on the top. I've actually got to stick the top on the guitar. I've even got to drill holes in the headstock for the uh, machine heads. So I've got a lot to do so I'm going to get on. Whew. Not sure how we're going to do this. Hi folks, before I carry on with this video, I just want to do a mention to another fellow amateur guitar builder called Gabrielle Retti. Um, she's a, a lady, I believe in Germany, who's a, a school teacher and uh, she's also an amateur guitar builder. And she's uh, set about a wonderful project to uh, teach her students how to build guitars. And uh, now in order to do that, she's got to raise some money and uh, she's gonna build a couple of acoustic guitars, which she's gonna sell. All I would say to you guys is please go across and have a look at her channel. She's a fantastic acoustic guitar builder, wonderful guitars. And I think this is a wonderful project. And so I'll put a link in the description below and I'll also put a link at the end of this video to uh, her video where she describes the project. Back to this video. I'm going to start with the binding and I've been trying to decide what to do here. Do I do a mitre joint or do I do a butt joint? And I think I'm just going to do a butt joint. Or am I? You see, in my pot of shell bits, I've got some thick pieces. And I'm just wondering whether I could insert a little piece of shell just between the two bits of binding right on the end there. I think that would look really smart. Okay, let's have a go. You see, when I showed my uh, little granddaughter the neck, her first reaction was, wow, granddad, diamonds. Now, <laughs> I know they're not diamonds, but they do have that little shine about them. And I think something on the end there would look really good. In fact, if I could find a really interesting piece, and that one looks quite interesting, I wonder what it's like when I cut through it, I don't know. But if I could find an interesting piece, I might even be tempted to sort of go into the, the top a little bit. That might be quite good fun, mightn't it? Do you know what, I think I'm gonna, yeah, saw this in half to see what the sort of profile looks like. Okay, well that was quite a chunk to chop through. Uh, I broke just one blade, so I don't think I did too bad. But I've ended up with this little petal, which I'm gonna embed here, just at the join. So what I'm gonna do is do a butt join of these two pieces of uh, binding. And then once I've trimmed this flush to the top, I shall just inlay that in there, perhaps at an angle, something like that. I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, I rather like that. Okay, after that distraction for a couple of hours, I think I better get back to doing this binding now. So, first thing I need to do is to trim this flush with the joint there. Let's see if I can do that. Don't worry about that little target mark on the back there. It's where I had a clamp pressed a little bit too hard. It's actually not marked the wood. It's actually the vinyl flooring that I used has uh, come off onto the wood. So here we go. Okay, this time I'm gonna to have to work from this end because that's where the joint is. 
and take it across there. Okay, so I think we'll do the same technique as I did before. That is glue and uh, stick on as we go. And I'm putting plenty of glue on this. Looks okay, I can't see any light coming through, so um, all I could do is leave that to cure. Okay, now, so I've put some very thin super glue all the way inside the uh, the bridge parts there just to strengthen that wood a bit, give a bit of a hard edge to it. So I'm going to leave that to dry. I think what I'm going to do now is see if I can cut out the outside shape from another piece of a van col. I was going to use this piece but I noticed there's some uh, shakes or splits in it on this side. It, I mean it looks alright that side but I'm not sure about that. This one I think is probably a better option. Got some nice grain there as well so uh, I, think, um, I think I'll try and mark it up at the end. I'm getting rather fond of this, what you might call a um, masking tape and sharp knife trick. So masking tape on first, like so, and we put the template on. Now what I should do, and what I am going to do, is put a little bit of masking tape on the back of there, which will hopefully hold it still for me. Okay, now I go around the template with a sharp knife. Trying not to cut into the template. Once that's done, we lift the template off. Now, for an inlay, I'd normally take the middle out, but I think what I'm going to do is take the outside off. Leaving me a nice sharp edge to work to. Tell you what, this method works really well, especially if you leave a little tiny edge so you know you haven't actually run into the, the tape. And of course now I'm all lined up ready to do the central hole. Now the central hole size will depend on the central bit that I'm making, so I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. Well that's another afternoon of guitar making that's just flown by. But I've got some bits done and uh, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so I'm going to leave it for now and I'll see you another day. Well it's another beautiful afternoon and I've got two more pieces of binding to fit. Now this piece worried me a bit but in actual fact look at that. That is almost perfect so I just need to mark up where I'm going to cut and uh, I think we're in business there. Uh, what I'm going to do is cut behind this binding on the front there. So, get my pencil sorted. We mark that just there. So I need to cut that at an angle. If you're new to this channel, you will notice that I don't have a vast array of tools. And that's because I don't think you need them. Tools I've got are the ones I use. So let's tackle this cut. You need a couple of nice saws. This one cost me two or three pound at a, a local fair. 
it was a bit rusty but uh, it soon cleaned up and it's a beautiful saw okay I've got the work in the vise I've got some strips of tape I've got glue I've got some clamps let's see if we can glue it now this joint here is going to need a bit more than just tape so let's see how I can do this um, got a roll of vinyl there in fact that might be too big let's try a smaller one I've got the same issue just here I've had to use a rather fiddly combination of clamps here so I'm going to leave that to uh, cure for a bit I think before I try and do the other side now to get the holes on this side of the bridge what I've done I've got a bit of cardboard here and I've actually pressed it against the pins on the end of these bolts um, with the with the bit of metal in place and then I've actually marked through that left an indent which I could uh, just see I've then marked through and uh, made mark the holes onto the aluminium so I'm now going to drill them with probably a one millimeter hole to start off with okay I'm ready to glue up this bridge now what, what I've done is I have sanded the backs of, of these pieces to quite a fine uh, grit but I've left that side a little bit rough and the same with the, the front of the bridge or actually it's going to be the back of the bridge. I've taped a bit of um, aluminium to the uh, bench here and that's because I need to raise up this this piece at the uh, front here just by a little bit I'm going to glue it with epoxy put them together and hopefully I can get this clamp on it I think I'm going to leave this perhaps for a couple of days to really cure I know it takes about 24 hours for this glue to uh, to really set but um, I may be tempted to leave it a little bit longer now then, one of the reasons for putting this bit of metal on the bottom of this uh, tail stop is to earth the strings. So what I want to do is just check that they are all going to be earthed. So that one's okay. Just whip through these holes. Just check it. No, we're not getting anything there. So that means that the, uh, the end there isn't going in deep enough. Okay. Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I've spent the last few minutes poking strings through this tailpiece and testing for a connection to the metal underneath. And, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not getting any connection. So, my plan A uh, doesn't seem to be working. It's a good job I've got a plan B. But now I'm off to make a Thai green curry. See you tomorrow. Well, I've spent a couple of hours this afternoon just first of all scraping the uh, the binding flat with the top. Uh, I, I used a bit of sandpaper in the corners so as not to disturb the corners. I also gave the top a really good sanding on both sides. It's looking reasonably good and it fits reasonably well on the top, which is a, a good thing. So I think the next thing to do with this top is to cut the sound hole. But I'm not sure I'm ready to do that just yet. So what I think I'm going to do is go back to the bridge and start working on the surround of the bridge. The first thing I need to do is to cut out a shape from some very thin aluminium. Now this is going to be the shape of the outside of the bridge but it's going to be a little bit smaller so that I can inset it underneath the bridge and the idea of this is that the screws for adjusting the height of the bridge will rest onto this plate. Once I've cut that out I can then mark that on the bottom of the wood and then just chisel out an indent. Well it was another fiddle but there we have the back in there I've lost a little bit of wood on that side 
which is um, probably not unexpected. But um, once it's put flush on the guitar, whoopsie daisy, I think it's going to be okay. Of course, I've got the added complication of the uh, top of the guitar being slightly curved, so I may have to revisit this and, um, yeah, shape it a little bit more. But um, I've got the general shape done. Now I need to make a channel in the top, which is uh, 12 mil wide. And to start that off, I've marked the ends and I'm gonna drill through with a 12 mil force and a bit. Well, that was another reasonably uh, uh, productive day in the, uh, in the workshop. Um, got some bits done for this bridge. Still quite a way to go, but um, I'm gonna call it a day today. Well, it's another beautiful sunny afternoon and I'm back out in the workshop and now I'm going to cut out the sound hole. And to do that, I've taken the design that Carolyn's drawn for me and I've just gone round it with uh, some French curves to, to get a much uh, better line. Um, now what I'm going to do is cut it out um, with a knife and on the back here I've stuck some cardboard so I can make myself a template. Okay, so I've cut a slot there and a slot there, so I should be able to line the centre line up. I can see it, it's very, very faint. Got it, there it is. Okay. I've got a fly in the workshop, which is uh, very annoying. But at the moment, it won't go. Okay, I'm just double checking my measurements here. Now then, the bridge goes on the front of that tape. So approximately there. And that means that the fret 22, actually if I get it on the right line, that's it. fret 22 is just on the edge there, which is where it should be. And um, well, that looks like that bridge position's right. I've marked that position. The reason I'm doing this is I need to put the cross base braces in and I don't want them to go across that hole. Okay, after a little bit of toing and throwing, I think I've got the position that I want. And this is interesting because if I now place this roughly in the center there, what you should see, he said looking down the back of the camera, is that there's a beam or a, a brace right underneath each one of these holes, which is significant in that the, the bolt that's going to be raising and lowering this middle section will be pressing down on those points. So hopefully any sound will transfer across the top. Well, we'll see, won't we? I've got the two pieces to length. Now I need to chop them in just there. So those cross braces are done. I'm now just going to put a, a brace just across there. Okay, so I flipped the body over and uh, put my X braces on and they weren't quite in the right place, even though they look right on the other side. So uh, what I've had to do is just adjust one of these uh, slots here and put a little fillet in. So I'm going to glue these two together and then I'm going to just tidy that little uh, piece up. I mean, you're not going to see it because it's going to be stuck to the back of the guitar, but yeah, let's make it look nice. So anyway, I think that's okay now. Um, what I need to do is just cut that to length, glue that up.
Now then, I'm ready to glue the braces onto the back. So I've marked out the position of the guitar in red and I've made myself some little clamping cords just by sticking some of the brace material on the back of a piece of plywood. And the idea is I will screw those into the base here and hopefully it should hold everything down really tight. So let's see if it works. I've got some uh, 3.5 centimeter screws. I've got the X brace, get that in the right position. And the cross brace, get that right. I think that's round that way. Whew. Okay, let's try it. Well, that took about six or seven minutes to clamp up. Um, all I can do now is uh, leave it to cure. Right, now I've glued this middle section of the bridge and it's not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but uh, most of it's gonna be hidden. I'm gonna cut the end pieces off and round them on the uh, sander. Uh, and then I'm gonna cut the central piece out so that this fits into it nice and snug. Okay, I'm just gonna very carefully go around this with a scalpel. Now I'm going to have to do quite a bit more work on this bridge because as you can see that I need to be able to get access to the screws. So my plan is on this side of the bridge to, to carve that out a little bit. Last night I ordered some M3 grub screws which are going to go in at each end. I really need to wait for those to come before I drill any holes and try and do some threading in the bottom there. So I think I'm going to put this bridge to one side and um, I think the next thing I need to look at is how the neck's going to fit the body. Hello there. Well, it's another really hot afternoon and I have a job which I really can't put off any longer. And that is to get this neck fitted into this body. I, I need to do that before I can set the height of the bridge or, or, or do anything else. So yeah, bite the bullet, Dave, you've got to get on and do it. So first thing I'm going to do is take this top off need to get some measurements sorted. I need to know the position of the 22nd fret. And to do that, I'm gonna lay this template on top of the ribs. Yeah, so that I can get the position. There we go. So if I put it just there. Obviously it's not absolutely accurate because uh, we can move the bridge around to a certain extent but um, it's important to know where that point is. Well guys do you remember that old Monty Python film where a, a knight tries to stop another crossing a bridge? You have to see the film. It's like that with this neck. Now some folks said bin it and well they were probably right because I started filming fitting the neck and the neck is now fitted. But in the process of doing that, I realized that uh, I've made a really big Dave moment. Let me show you. You'll see that when I carve the back of this neck, I went too far along. I didn't take account of the fact that the, the top of the guitar sticks out more than the bottom. And so I've got a rather interesting problem to deal with, but I am gonna deal with it. 
Now from the front I'm really pleased with the way that this is all looking so that's a positive isn't it? The problem that I have is going to be on the other side so let me just flip this over and you see that because I've shaped this neck if I can get that in the camera see that because I've shaped this neck back too far um, I've got the side sort of butting up but I, I've got to do something clever with this piece here to, to make it look reasonable but to be perfectly honest with you I don't think that's a problem um, I think it's going to look okay well I've had a good look at the patient and I think I know what this needs this is going to have to be a set neck guitar so um, for those of you who don't like my bolts in the back you'll probably be quite pleased this is going to be a glued on neck and um, I think I can carve this just to match that and it's going to look all right. Whew. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to secure this neck um, because at the moment it's just a flat plate. And so what I've done, I've marked in pencil where the neck sits and now I'm going to put some blocks of wood on the sides here. I've been very keen not to get anything that touches the top because I wanted to try and keep the vibrations there um, but I think I can do that so let's go and have a look for some cherry Okay, I'm going to glue these pieces in individually. Okay, well, it's an extremely hot day and uh, obviously things haven't gone quite to plan. So uh, I've got to call it a day and um, I'll come back to this tomorrow to stick the other piece in. Good morning. Well, it's another really hot day here. Now then, I have no confidence in myself, do I? Which is a rather strange thing to say, you know, being a YouTuber, because I mean, you see what I do, walks and all, and quite honestly, sometimes it scares me what I do. Anyway, this morning we're up nice and early and we've been for an eight mile bike ride and got the blood pumping around the brain and I think I can fix this neck problem. What I've done, I've put some inserts round the, the, uh, where the neck's gonna fit. And I've also put a little insert in just to help me get over the problem that I've got with the shape of the back of the neck. I'm gonna bolt this neck on. You know, that's the decision I made early on and um, I'm gonna stick to it. So let's get on. Right, in order to make the neck fit, I'm going to have to shape this little piece of wood. So I think I'll start doing it with the Dremel and um, then perhaps some files to get it um, just exactly right. <laughs> Right, well I think that's going to work. Um, I had a little problem in that I'd originally super glued it on and in the final finishing I poured a little bit of extra super glue in uh, with some dust and obviously that loosened the super glue. So um, I've cleaned it up and I've glued it on with wood glue. So I think that's going to be okay. I mean it's quite a delicate little piece but once the neck's uh, fitted in it should be okay. I am going to go with a bolt on neck because it does give me the ability to adjust the neck that I wouldn't get uh, if I had a fixed neck um, and I think it's going to work okay. 
So I think I'm gonna call this video a day and go into the call and edit it. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to go and see uh, Gabrielle's video. Uh, put a link on at the end of this video. And um, in the next video, I'm gonna be featuring a guitar that you have built. Uh, it's a, a friend of this channel. And so uh, it's a really super guitar. Um, so please join me for that. But in the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Cheers.